Welcome to the first lesson from the first module of the course, where I am going to start with a brief introduction of how many of us think that data should be published on the web. Let us start by focusing on how a large amount of data is being published on the web nowadays. Basically, we have a good set of websites that are exposing data that comes from databases, usually relational databases, in the form of HTML pages. The slide uh, shows just two of the many websites that are exposing data in such a manner. The IMDb site, which provides data about films, and the CIA World Fat Book, which provides general geopolitical data from all over the world. As already mentioned, such data may be made available in the form of HTML, the language used for creating web pages, or in many other more structured but not to web oriented formats, such as CSVs, comma separated values, PDFs, etc. Such a way to publish data is perfectly suitable for humans that want to consume it since they can browse and navigate over the generated pages and tables, finding the information that they need. This is part of what we do in our everyday life uh, when we are looking for information to solve any problem. Furthermore, as uh, we can usually find such information in search engines which are capable of indexing the data inside those data sources. In fact, the result of such queries in, in a search engine will be links to documents or data sources that contain the data that we are interested in. However, when it comes to finding solutions to more complex queries, for example, those that are evaluated across several pages or data sources, such query engines are not necessarily doing a good job. Why is this happening? Well, this happens because we want answers to our complex queries, but the way in which data is being published on the classical web is not necessarily the most appropriate for that purpose. What we would like to consider the web is as if it was a giant, global, well-connected and queryable database that contains and integrates all the data that is made available in those heterogeneous data sources, without the need for making the data available in HTML or in any other form as an intermediate step. That is, it would be great to be talking about a web of data instead of a web of documents, as we can consider today's web. How can we achieve this? How can we achieve this? Well, in 2006, Tim Berners-Lee proposed using four basic principles for the publication of data on the web, on what we call uh, lean data. The first one is use URIs uh, to name anything that we want to refer to. That is, provide a universal identity beyond the primary keys in closed databases to all those data items that we want to expose. The second one is make sure that those URIs follow the HTTP protocol so that these data items will be easy to find uh, using usual web browsers and technology. The third principle is make sure that when those URIs are called, some data is given back to the client and make sure that such data is available using a standard language, such as RDF. And finally, pay attention to providing links from those URIs to other URIs, as it is done on the classical web to allow navigating from one web page to another. This will allow overcoming the data silos that one normally finds in separated closed databases. The URL that we provide in this slide refers to those original principles, which have been better articulated later in further publications and sets of guidelines. By the end of this lesson, we will ask you to view the TED uh, talk given by Tim Berners-Lee in 2009, which explained these and other concepts. In summary, and following our initial example on films and countries, this is the way that the four principles are articulated in order to construct such a global web of data. First, we need global identifiers, URIs, to identify those resources that we want to refer to. For example, Bolivia as a country and even the rain as a film. Then we use RDF, the RDF data model, to represent data from those databases, such as the fact that Bolivia has 8 million inhabitants or that the aforementioned field has the name Even the Rain. Then we make such data available through the HTTP protocol. And finally, we create name links among data items from both databases, such as the fact that Even the Rain was filled in Bolivia. Following all these principles will ensure that we will have our giant, global, well-connected web database.